We often associate the term ghost with horror and gore, but what happens when one ghost decides not to scare humans and instead wants to be friends with them? How would he be treated by other ghosts? More importantly, how would humans react to such a ghost? Well, that's what Casper the Friendly Ghost deals with. Casper was an integral part of our lives growing up and made us laugh and cry at the same time. That's why in today's video, we'll dive into the origins of the fan favorite friendly ghost, Casper. But before we get started with the video, we have a small request for you. If you like our content, subscribe to us and like this video. It might just be a simple click for you, but it means a lot to us. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get started. Creation of Casper the Friendly Ghost Seymour Reed was the writer responsible for creating Casper the Friendly Ghost. Seymour was behind the ideation of the character and illustrator Joe Oriolo was behind the illustrations. The duo initially envisioned introducing Casper in a children's storybook, but the idea never manifested and they had to sell the rights of the character for only $175 to Famous Studio, which was the animation division of Paramount Pictures. After acquiring the rights to Casper, Paramount Pictures released the first novel tune called The Friendly Ghost in 1945, which featured Casper in the lead role. The tune entailed the journey of Casper, who was a tiny little ghost who had no desire to scare people and instead wanted to be friends with them. But everyone was scared of him because he was a ghost. Thus, he tried to commit suicide by lying on a rail track, forgetting that he was already dead. However, later he found two kids named Bonnie and Johnny who became his friends and played with him. When the mother of both of the children found out about Casper, she was initially frightened and asked Casper to leave the house. Thus, Casper decided to leave. But around the same time, a banker arrived at their doorstep and got frightened by the sight of a ghost. So he tore up the mortgage, not wanting to acquire a haunted house, and ran away from the site. This made the mother believe that Casper was harmless. Thus, she adopted him, and the tune ended with Casper becoming part of her family. Since this tune was well received by the audience, especially the kids, Paramount Pictures created a sequel to it called There's Good Booze Tonight. This tune was the same story of Casper trying to befriend others, but failing multiple times. This made him tear up, but he was greeted by a fox cub who was not afraid of him. The two became really good friends, but soon the life of the fox came into peril when a fox hunter arrived with his dogs. The hunter tried to kill the fox, and Casper tried to protect his new friend. However, Casper's attempt to save his friend were a colossal failure, as the little fox ended up dead. But that was not the end, as the little fox returned in his ghostly form and became friends with Casper in the afterlife. This was definitely a tear-jerking tale of friendship. It was also well received by the audience, so Casper also appeared in another project called The Haunting We Will Go. Even though Casper amassed a huge audience and was greatly loved, it was also criticized for its lack of uniqueness. The critics claimed that every Casper project started with Casper trying to make friends, but failing because of his ghostly appearance. However, Casper later found a friend and found acceptance from others. They believed that instead of sticking to the same boring template, the makers should try something different and tell a unique tale that fans would love. Oh, there was a crooked man, and he ran a crooked mile. Evolution of Casper Due to Casper's popularity, he was also featured in the comics created by Harvey Comics. He made his first appearance in Harvey Comics hit issue number 61, and later branched out to receive his own comic series. Later, the founder of Harvey Comics, Alfred Harvey, bought the rights to Casper and created multiple comic book series on the cute little ghost. Due to the huge success of Casper, the creator of Harvey Comics also created multiple spin-off characters like Spooky, the tough little ghost, the ghostly trio, and Wendy, the good little witch. In the comics, Spooky was the cousin of Casper, and the ghastly trio were his uncles. But Wendy was a completely new character with no relation to Casper. Wendy was a witch who wanted to use her powers for good. Thus, she and Casper became good friends in the comics and teamed up multiple times to help people. Apart from Casper's extensive comic book appearance, he has been part of various TV shows. He was first featured on Matt's Fun Day Funnies, an animation anthology series. Later in 1963, Casper got a new TV series called The New Casper Cartoon Show, where Casper was voiced by Norma Hastings. This TV series ran for 26 episodes and followed the adventures of Casper as he went about forming new friendships and helping new people. After this series, Casper was also featured in another animated TV series called Casper and the Angels. This series gave us a novel take on the already repetitive tale of Casper. The show is set in the year 2179 and tells the story of two space police officers who patrol around a space city on their flying motorcycles. 
In this tune, Casper acts as a guardian ghost for the two officers, and assists them in multiple adventures across the series. The series was broadcast in the year 1979, and lasted for only 13 episodes. Later, Casper was featured in another animated series, called The Harvey Toon Show, also known as Casper and Friends. This series ran from 1990 to 1994, and had almost 78 episodes, spanning across 5 seasons. Apart from Casper, multiple other characters owned by Harvey Comics, like Tommy Tortoise, Mo Hare, Baby Huey, and Wendy the Good Little Witch also appeared in the TV series. Adhering to Casper's popularity, a live-action movie was also made on the character, which became a massive hit at the box office, and introduced the character to a larger audience. Even though the movie was a huge success, a sequel to the live-action movie never materialized, and instead we got another animated TV show, called The Spooktacular New Adventures of Casper. This show featured all the characters from the live-action movie, but presented in their animated form. It was more of a sitcom-type comedy show, where they would often break the fourth wall and talk with the audience. The show ran for four seasons and 52 episodes, and was aired on Fox Kids. After the end of the spooktacular New Adventures of Casper, Casper did not appear for more than a decade. However, in 2009, Casper finally made it to the TV screens again with Casper Scare School. The story of this series was completely different from what we had seen so far. This series showcased Casper being forced to join a scare school, where he was taught how to scare people, which was against his nature. The story of the series focused on Casper navigating his life in the scare school, solving mysteries, and going through many adventures with his friends. And we'll be honest, Casper's Scare School is our personal favorite among the Casper TV series that we've seen so far. It's a funny and unique take on the repetitive tale of Casper, and the way he is portrayed makes for so many good laughs and memories. Casper's Cinematic Journey – Ghostly Delights on the Big Screen Apart from his comic book and TV series appearances, Casper has also been in five movies, and we'll discuss all of them, starting with the fan-favorite 1995 movie. The movie starts with Casper and his uncles, the ghostly trio, haunting the Whiffstaff Manor, while Kat and her father Harvey come to live there. Kat had lost her mother Amelia, which prompts Harvey to develop a weird obsession with trying to contact the ghost of Amelia. After they arrive in the Whiffstaff Manor, the ghostly trio tries to scare Harvey and Kat away, but fail miserably. And later, Casper quickly forms a bond with the father-daughter duo. When Kat learns that Casper does not remember anything about his human life, she helps him retrieve his memories. And for the first time, we get a proper backstory of Casper. Casper McFadden was a 12-year-old boy who died due to pneumonia. After Casper's death, his father turned completely insane and tried to create a device called Lazarus, and tried to create a device called Lazarus, with the intention of reviving his dead son. Around the same time, the ghostly trio manipulated Harvey into believing they could help him meet Amelia, but their real plan was much more sinister. They wanted to kill Harvey so that he could also become a part of their ghost group. However, they have a change of heart and decide not to kill him. But it was too late as Harvey fell to his death and became a ghost. Meanwhile, in the Whiffstaff Manor, Casper finds Lazarus and thinks he has found a way to come back to life. But that's when Harvey arrives with the ghostly trio, and watching her dad as a ghost completely breaks Cat. Thus, Casper makes the ultimate sacrifice and revives Mr. Harvey instead of himself. In the climax of the movie, Amelia, Harvey's late wife, comes to meet the family and Casper. She reveals that after her death, she became an angel, and with her powers, she returned Casper to his human form to enjoy the Halloween party with Cat. The catch was Casper would revert back to his normal ghost self after the clock struck 10. In his human form, Casper meets Cat and enjoys a dance with her. However, as the clock strikes 10, Casper reverts to his ghost self and scares away all the people at the party. This movie did a very good job at the box office because of its emotional roller coaster of a story and the mind blowing acting of the cast, especially Christina Ricci. A sequel to the movie was also planned, but it never manifested, and Casper always remained a standalone movie that is still a pretty good watch, considering it was made almost 30 years ago. However, attempts were made to recreate Casper's magic with a prequel called Casper A Spirited Beginning. This movie was marked as a prequel to the 1995 OG movie, but completely failed to establish any connection to it. The story follows the journey of Casper, who's still unaware that he's died. However, he learns that he is dead and befriends another young boy named Chris Carson. Chris learns that Casper is a young ghost, and is still unaware of the etiquette of a ghost, so he introduces him to the ghostly trio, who trains Casper to be a proper ghost. But Casper has no interest in scaring people, and decides to be a friendly ghost. This brings Casper into confrontation with an evil ghoul called Kibosh. One thing leads to another, and Chris's life comes under threat, as he's imprisoned in a mansion with a bomb inside. 
but Casper arrives in time and saves the life of Chris by swallowing the bomb, which explodes inside his stomach. Although this movie was good, it tried too hard to connect itself with the 1995 movie, but failed to do so and received criticism from critics and fans alike. Apart from this movie, Casper was also part of another live action movie that introduced Wendy, the good little witch. The story of this movie follows Casper and the ghostly trio as they go on vacation where Casper meets Wendy, the good little witch, and the two embark on a journey to defeat an evil warlock. Although the movie was decent, it was still not liked by many due to various reasons. Apart from his live action portrayals, Casper has also been seen in two animated movies, the first being Casper's Haunted Christmas released in the year 2000. The movie follows Casper's journey in his attempts to scare humans. The ruler of ghosts, Kaibosh, claims that according to the ghost law, a ghost must scare at least one person a year, and if they fail to do so, they will be banished to the dark. Thus, he orders Casper to scare at least one person during Christmas, otherwise, he'd be banished forever. This prompts the ghostly trio to help Casper scare the Jollymore family, but Casper goes back to his usual demeanor and befriends Holly, the youngest member of the Jollymore family. In a last attempt to save Casper, the ghostly trio summons Spooky, who tries to imitate Casper and fool Kaibosh into believing that Casper scared a person. Despite all their attempts, Casper is still not able to scare anyone, but in the end, he successfully scares the ghostly trio and earns the praise of Kaibosh. After this, Casper also appeared in another animated title called Casper's Scare School, released in 2006. This animated series tells the story of Casper being enrolled in the Scare School, where he'll learn the art of scaring people. And if you're wondering if this movie and the TV series with the same title have any connection, then yes, they do. The TV series with the same title was released in 2009 and tells the journey of Casper and his friends after the events of the movie. Heartbreaking Revelation and Forgotten Lore of Casper the Friendly Ghost Despite the fact that the character of Casper was made for kids, there were many aspects and untold stories of the character that were completely heartbreaking. The most significant one is that Casper's original creators never received the remuneration that was meant for them. They created the character of Casper for a children's storybook, but the book never materialized, and they had to sell the character to the animation division of Paramount Pictures for only $175. If you're wondering, that's around $4,000 worth of money during that time. And that's the only remuneration they received for creating such an amazing character. Apart from the creators not receiving proper remuneration, Casper is a character with a tragic backstory, which was revealed in the 1995 movie. Before the movie, Casper was only referred to as Casper, or Casper the Friendly Ghost, and he never had a nickname that made him feel like a real person. However, in the 1995 movie, Casper received a proper backstory, and it was heartbreaking. Casper McFadden was originally a small 12-year-old kid who had never known the love of a mother because she died during his birth. He was raised by his single father, J.T. McFadden. But one day, while playing outside at night, Casper caught pneumonia and met his demise. The death of Casper completely broke J.T. McFadden, who had then lost both his wife and his son. He was declared insane and became obsessed with creating a machine that could revive his dead son. To be honest, Cat's dad, Harvey, was also going through a hard time because of the death of his wife, Amelia. He was so obsessed with meeting the ghost of Amelia that he fell into a trap and even lost his life. After Casper died, he started haunting his own house without any knowledge of who he was and what his origins were. It was only thanks to Cat's efforts that Casper finally recalled his life as a human. Casper's sufferings did not end with his death, and he was still tormented and bullied even though he was a ghost. As Casper was a friendly ghost, he easily trusted the ghostly trio, who made him work like a slave for them. If this much pain and suffering was not enough, Casper was presented with the opportunity to be revived and brought to the human world and live a life with Cat. However, all this came crashing down when Cat found that her father, Harvey, had also died. Casper could not see Cat sad and sacrificed this golden opportunity and revived Harvey instead. Although Casper was given the chance to become human again, that was only for a short period of time. Apart from live action movies, in a tune titled There's Good Booze Tonight, it was revealed that Casper had finally made a new friend called Ferdy, a fox cub who was not afraid of Casper. While Casper was playing with Ferdy, the fox cub was discovered by a hunter, who tried to kill the little fox. So Casper tried to protect his best friend, and even managed to scare away the hunter and his dogs, but it was too late as Ferdy was already dead due to the bullets shot by the hunter. Casper was heartbroken because Ferdy was the only friend he ever had. He created a grave and buried his best friend there while mourning his loss. However, the only good thing that happened was that the ghost of Ferdy came back to Casper, and they stayed happily ever after. 
To be honest, even though Casper was created for small kids, the heartbreaking tale of the friendliest ghost can even bring a grown-up man to tears. <laughs> Marvelous verdict! If you're a longtime Casper fan and are sulking because of the drought of Casper content, we might have the perfect news for you. A live-action Casper TV series is currently in the works at the Peacock Studios. If you're wondering, the incredible Caillou Wu is writing the story for the series. Kai is well known for being the writer of Hannibal and The Flash. So we can say that the series is in safe hands for now. As for right now, we know that this won't be a lighthearted Casper story because the description for the movie available on IMDb claims that this will be a horror adventure series. The series follows the events of a family arriving in a new house in Eternal Falls and Casper going on a journey to uncover hidden secrets that have been buried for hundreds of years. The 1995 Casper movie was liked by all because it was high on emotions and made the audience feel connected with the character. And if the new series successfully retells the story of Casper for a new audience, then we might just be looking at the biggest cinematic comeback of all time. However, the show's release date is undefined for now, but we promise we'll get back to you as soon as we find an update about this new movie. With that being said, if you like our content, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!